Hello friends, today we're going to learn how to use MS Excel Solver to solve a given transportation problem. So before we start going inside the solver, let us try to understand what exactly is a transportation problem. A transportation problem is a problem which involves in transporting homogeneous item from a finite number of supply points to a finite number of demand centers. And over here, I've taken an example of a transportation problem with five supply points and six demand centers. For each of the supply points, you'll have a finite number of units available to them, which are available to be transported to the various demand center. And for each of the demand center, you'll have a number given over here, and this number denotes the maximum amount of units that can be transported or stored in the, that particular demand center. The number inside the table represents the unit cost of transportation. For example, this number 25 is representing the amount of money that we should be paid if we happen to transport one unit from fourth supply point to the fourth demand center. Now, as we all know, Excel Solver can be very conveniently and efficiently used to solve any linear and nonlinear programming problem. So the first thing that we need to understand is how to convert a transportation problem into a linear program problem so that the solver can be used. <clears throat> Let's see this formulation. This is the linear program formulation of a transportation problem with five supply points and six demand centers. CIZ is representing the unit cost of transportation from the i -th supply point to the z demand center. XIZ is the addition variable, and XIZ over here is denoting the amount of units that will be transported from the I supply point to the Z demand center. Here I is the uh, available units at the I supply point, BJ is the amount required at the Z demand center. And we have two set of conditions over here. The first set of conditions represent the supply constraints. The supply constraints are nothing but if you sum up the variables of the first row, that should be equal to the availability or the supply of the first supply point, similarly to the other. And the same applies to the demand constraints. The sum of the columns should be equal to the, re the requirement or the, uh, the, the amount demanded at the first demand center. Now, see over here. This condition is for the condition of a balanced transportation problem. So what is a balanced transportation problem? A balanced transportation problem is that problem where the total supply, the total supply equals to the total demands. And the excise is the amount that you're going to transport it has to be non-negative. So we have converted this transportation problem into a linear program formulation and hence solver can be used to solve this such type of problem. Now let's come back to the example that we have. Now in this examples, what the first thing that we need to do is we need to say whether the given problem is a balanced transportation problem or not. For that we need to find out the total supply and then <coughs> the total demand. See, since the total supply is equal to the total demand, the given problem, the given example that we have is a balanced transportation problem. Now next go. Now let's go to the next step. Now over here I'm creating an an additional space, not a space. Now demands are here, the supplies are here, and additional column, additional row, additional column, additional co row. Now over here I'm going to write down the uh, this first supply constraint. The first supply constraint was the sum of the variable of the first row should be equal to the availability of that row or the supply of that row. Now, uh, this the colored space over here is going to give us the values of the addition variable when after solving through solve. Let me drag this one, apply the formula to the remaining rows. The same will done. For the column constraints or the demand constraints sum the column apply the formula to the other column now as i said 
these are going to be the space for x11, x12, and so on. Finally, x56. Right. So, so what we do now is we find out this space. Uh, we cre we create another space over here. This space is going to be this space for z. So how to do it? Uh, this space for z will be obtained using the sum product formula. Sum product of the unit cost matrix and the space that you created for the solution, the additions variable. Now it's done. Now you are now you're in a position to go to solver and solver in your Excel sheet. Excel sheet you can find it uh, in the data. Click on data. Click over here. <clears throat> Reset all. So this is the space for the objective functions. The cell where the formula was created. The objective is minimization by sensing the variable cell. This one, the additions variable cell at the constraints. As I said, you have to set a constraint, the supply constraints, and the demand constraints. Demand constraints over here. Okay, now you come out. Axial, the variables are non negative. Select the simplex from here, click solve. Now, see the solver found a solution, all the constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied, and hence your final solution is away. These are the values of the additions variable x11 is 0, so x14 is where you are having the numbers, and this is a minimum cost of transportations as part of the optimum schedule. Thank you.